Carrying out risk assessments. The best way to make sure that everyone is safe during your activities is to carry out a risk assessment. A risk assessment is simply a process of identifying risks and hazards and then taking action to reduce these risks and hazards. This presentation will tell you how to do this. It's important that your risk assessment is written down, shared between all the people who are delivering the activity, checked regularly to make sure that actions have been carried out, and also updated regularly in case anything changes. And lastly, that it's clear about who's responsible for health and safety during the event or activity. It's also a good idea to carry out a risk assessment for each service or event that you run, especially if they happen at different times or in different venues. So let's think about what you need to take into account to carry out your risk assessment. Venue. It's a good idea to visit the venue and have a good look around. This includes all the rooms you might use, halls, kitchens, toilets, and ways in and ways out of the building. The activity. Think about whether the activity might be potentially dangerous, whether that's climbing a hill or cooking in a kitchen. And the equipment. Think about any equipment or tools that you'll be using and whether they have potential to cause injury. The people. Very importantly, think about who is using the service and how that affects the risk. For example, snowy weather may be OK for children to go out in, but more dangerous for older people. Remember to consider all the people who will attend, even if they're not specifically using your service. For instance, if parents bring along children. And also remember to think about people who may have additional needs. For example, people with mobility issues or people who don't read or understand English. Lastly, take into account any government or health guidance, for example, COVID guidelines. If you're booking a venue or booking an activity, the providers of these services should also have their own risk assessments, which you can ask to see, but it's still a good idea to do your own. So the first step of your risk assessment is to identify the hazards and what could go wrong. Examples of this could be cables on the floor. People could slip, trip or fall. Fire. People could get trapped with fatal consequences. Kettles and pots. People could burn or scald themselves. And then identify who could be affected. Many hazards will affect everyone, but some may only apply to a certain group. So examples of the people who could be affected could be participants of the service or activity, their children, staff and volunteers. Step two of carrying out your risk assessment is to think about what you can do to make the hazard less dangerous. What action can you take? If we think about the examples in the previous slide, actions could be making sure that all cables go along the edge of the room if possible, and if not, are taped to the floor. Telling people at the beginning of an event what to do if the fire alarm goes off. You might also want to work with the venue to make sure that translated signs are available for fire exits. And to prevent scalds and burns, only people who are cooking are allowed in the kitchen. All of these actions need to be written down so that you can monitor them and make sure that they're carried out. In terms of fire safety, if you have your own building, then you will have legal responsibilities around carrying out fire risk assessments and putting in place a range of safety checks. See our fact sheet for more information. But even if you don't have your own building, it's important to find out fire procedures from each venue and make sure that you tell people taking part in your event or activity. Actions can also be training or information briefings for staff and volunteers to help reduce the risk. For example, first aid training, food hygiene training or fire warden training. Depending on what your activity is and how many people are involved, you may not be legally required to provide a first aider, but it's good practice to either book an experienced first aider for bigger events or to train your staff in basic first aid, as well as having a first aid kit available. If you're using another venue, then ask them if they have a first aid kit or if they have a first aider on site and make sure you know how to find them. If you employ staff, you will also have legal responsibilities regarding first aid. So please see our fact sheet for more information. Step three of your risk assessment is to carry out all of the actions that you identified in step two. Agree who's responsible for carrying out the actions. This could be one person or a number of different people. Agree how you will monitor your risk assessment. How will you check that everything has been put into action and who will do it? 
You should also update your risk assessment as you carry out all the actions and review it regularly in case something has changed. In most cases, your hard work will pay off and your event or activity will go ahead smoothly and safely. However, your team should continue to assess risk on an ongoing basis during the event. For example, if someone is accidentally blocking a fire exit or if there are too many people in a certain space. Raise any risks or health and safety issues with the named person who has overall responsibility for health and safety at the event or the activity. And if you become concerned for the safety or welfare of the people involved, then you must take action immediately. This could involve putting new measures in place. For example, stopping children running around near hot food, stopping the service or activity completely if necessary, and calling emergency services in an emergency situation. But remember, risk assessments are about thinking about the worst case scenario. Most of the things within your risk assessments won't happen. It's not possible to reduce the risk completely, but all you have to do is to make sure that you've thought about the potential dangers and done what you can to avoid them or to minimise them. If you do this, then you'll have made sure that everyone can stay safe and enjoy the event or activity.